Well, when you're going up, line number 17 in hex, again, if you're confused with this, you can always open up the calculator because nobody has all these memorized. Hit, hit hex right here, and the calculator might be in standard mode, just like this. You want to go to scientific. Go to hex, you can type in 17, and go to decimal to see what it would be in numbers that you may be used to, and it's 23. So, what we're saying here is, we're going to decrement 500, which is the vertical position of the sprite. Then what we do is we load 500 into memory, into the accumulator. LDA means load into the accumulator 500. We CMP, we compare it to 17. So we're saying, is the vertical position of the sprite less than, or no, excuse me, is the vertical position of the sprite equal to 17? If not, keep moving. That means if it's not, we just keep it moving. So let's take a look at that, how this works, okay? Sprite's here. Let's say we're right here. We hit up. What happens? The sprite moves up, 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 up. It's moving up because we're checking. Is it at line 17? If it's not, keep moving. All right, we're moving, 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 moving. And then we hear the beep. That's because we're at line 17. So why does it stop? It stops because if it isn't, this is, um, if it isn't, we go to check down. If it is, we take the number 17, we load it into the accumulator, and we store it into 500, which is the vertical position. So what we're saying is, move it up. Is it at 17? If it isn't, let it keep going. So let it go from 20 to 19 to 18 to 17. But once it gets to 17, keep putting 17 in the vertical position. So we're literally just loading that same value and putting it back into the vertical position, not letting it go any further. So you might be able to understand if you change this number, change this number, you can allow the sprite to go further or a shorter distance. That brings up an interesting point. Is that before you might have thought, when you see this demo, that the sprite is hitting a wall. There's no wall there. You should know that from drawing. You go back into the name table editor to make a hole for the sprite to escape. Recompile it. And here you can see the sprite has a place to get away. But it can't. The reason the sprite can't go through that hole is because that hole isn't there. You made that hole. But you need to make the hole in the code too if you're going to allow that sprite to go by. So again, changing this number, changing this number will change the bounding box, meaning how far the sprite can go before it goes off the screen. And of course, whenever you make a hit, you also hear a sound. This code here plays the sound. Then we check down. If you press the down button, this is the code that happens. We increment the vertical position of the sprite to move it down. This is the same type of test. We can see if it's at level number CF below. CF doesn't sound like a number that I know offhand. So if we go to hex and type in CF and then go to decimal, we don't let it go past line 207 on the bottom. We go left. Not surprising, we're decreasing the horizontal position of the sprite, checking it against 18. We go right, we're increasing the horizontal position and not letting it go past E0. Again, E0 in hex is line 224. Then we're checking the select button, the start button, the B button, the A button, but there's nothing happening here. So that's why I put this comment in. Something will happen here if select is pushed. So as you learn more about the NES, this might be a place to experiment. Put some code in here, and then hit the select button and see what happens. Same thing with start, B, and A. So now we're back to the NMI, which is perfect, because this is exactly where we'd be if we were the program counter of the NES. So the NMI happens 60 times a second. What do we do? We update the sprite, and we check the controller. Update the sprite, check the controller. That's all we do. We've got about through everything in the code except for the vectors. Vectors are at the very bottom, and they I tell you not to touch them because you don't want to. The vectors just said a few things. 
They set where you go when an NMI occurs. Well, we're going to the part that says NMI. Where to go when you reset? We go to that line at the very top that says reset. Where to go when there's an IRQ or an interrupt? We go to IRQ. We're not using IRQs in this code, so none appear. Let's go back to the top one more time and look through to make sure we understand what each part of the code does in order. You want to learn to think like a programmer for the NES, for the Famicom, for the $10 computer. We need to know that there's a lot of repetition. I think you'll see this when we go through here. We start with a header telling the emulator what our code is about. Then we reset. We turn off the screen. We clear the memory. We set the variables. We wait for the PPU to warm up. We point to the palette. We load the palette. We point to the name table. We clear it. Then we load it. That's loading our first screen. We point to the sprite memory. We clear the sprites, and then we load the sprites. We turn on the screen. We go in that loop. And remember, after that loop, we're now controlled by the NMI, that interrupt that happens 60 times a second, which controls our code. As we know, we update the sprite 60 times a second, so we see where the sprite is on the screen. Then we do this long controller test, which controls the sprite, lets it move, and makes sounds if it hits. And we're at the bottom where all the data is stored. Again, this is the palette data. Changing these numbers will change the colors in the stream. Changing this tile will change where the sprite, uh, which sprite the tile is. Changing the vertical and horizontal will also change where the sprite starts. And changing these numbers will change the color of the background and the color of the sprite itself. So the code isn't that complicated when you see it all, but there's a lot of repetition. Always remember one important thing about programming for the $10 computer. You never know where the memory is at startup. Always clear it before you load it.